Maximize your skills with rudimental drumming at schoolofsuperdrumming.com. The link is in the description. The fatality stick trick is the most unpredictable stick trick out there. But there is a way to minimize the unpredictability of this stick trick. One example is when you're actually hitting the stick. If you hit it really lightly, then most likely the stick is not going to get that much spin at all and the butt of the stick is just going to bounce off of the drum. Which ultimately isn't a bad thing, but you're not really going to get any height out of it and it's going to be really difficult to catch the stick that way. So you're going to have to hit the stick kind of hard. At the same time with your left hand, you got to give it enough push so that when you hit the stick, it does enough flips in order to hit the point that it's supposed to hit at on the drum. So basically, you got to have a combination of two different things going on perfectly aligned with each other. The force of the hit and the force of the push. When those things are perfectly in line, you're going to have a high likelihood of the stick going straight into the air doing perfect spins for you to be able to catch the stick. If you hit the stick too high up onto the other stick, there's going to be a high chance that the butt of the stick is going to tap the drum head and kind of mess up the spin in general. So pretty much you want to avoid the butt of the stick hitting the drum. Instead, you want the top of the stick to hit the drum because that's going to give you the best chance for high rebound. One thing you want to avoid is with your left hand sliding the stick into the other stick. So try not to slide the stick over before hitting it or you're going to get this type of result. So although the drumstick did hit the drum at the right point and it got the flips, the reason it was so low is because is because I swung the stick too softly so hitting the drumstick too softly is going to result in the stick not really getting any air time so you got to make sure you hit the stick hard enough so that it gets height because the harder the drumstick hits the surface the higher it's going to go in the air but at the same time i did push the stick enough so that it can get the full rotation that it needs in order to hit the drum at the tip of the stick but that's why you got to make sure you hit the stick hard enough so that you can get that air time This time, I hit the stick a little bit harder, and that is the result of the stick going higher into the air. And at the same time, I kept the same amount of push with the other stick. And as you can see with the results, the stick was able to do what it's supposed to normally do. So this is the result of me going overboard with the push and the hit. If you overdo both of those, this is going to be the result. Sometimes you might get lucky with the stick ending up hitting the drum. And sometimes you're going to see some misfortunes like this one. So like I said, if you want to eliminate the unpredictability of this stick trick, make sure that you follow the exact tips that I've been explaining throughout this video. Make sure the push and the hit of the stick has an equal velocity. So this is the result of me pushing the stick over too much. When you do that, the direction of the stick is going to go with whichever one was stronger. So if the push was stronger than the hit, it's going to go towards the direction of the push and vice versa. If you hit it too hard and don't push it enough, it's going to go towards the direction of the hit. And of course, as you see here, it went the direction of the push, which means you pushed it too much. So when it comes to actually catching the stick, you got to practice your traps. So ideally, you want to catch the stick between your wrist and the other stick that's in your hand. And pretty much to practice the traps, you're going to toss the stick in the air and try to trap it between your wrist and your other stick. And you're just going to keep practicing this until you feel comfortable enough with it. You don't have to catch it too hard because you don't want to hurt your wrist when doing so. So make sure you get a nice firm grip, but not too tight when you're catching the stick. Now, when it comes to actually trying to catch the stick after you do the rebound aspect of it, it's ultimately going to come down to your accuracy, how well you're able to locate the stick and catch it where you need to catch the stick at. Don't worry so much about how you catch the stick, like if you catch the stick where the tip of the head is. Don't worry about that. As long as you catch the stick, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Just catch the stick.
So here's my little fatality lick that I love to use in a lot of my videos and performances to pretty much in whatever show I'm doing. So the first two counts is gonna be the high mom and then the crossover all with the left hand, of course. So you gotta know how to do both of those things before trying to do this. So these are all predominantly 16th note based with the exception of on the first count, it's gonna be uh, a 16th note followed by a 32nd note. And then whenever you're going into the high mom, as you're doing the high mom beat, it's gonna be another 32nd note, which pretty much kind of changes up the rhythm a little bit. And then following right after that high mom, you're going straight into the crossover, which is gonna be another 32nd note. The 32nd notes are gonna fall on the one, and then it's gonna fall on the uh of the first count. And then going into count two, it's gonna fall on the e and then those are the main things you really got to worry about with the rhythm and then going through the rest of it on count three right after you play that tap note off of the left hand you're going to do a stick shot off of the right hand as you do a backflip off of the left hand and traditional grip to prep it for the fatality so essentially you're going to have about one and a half counts to prepare for the fatality and as you're preparing for the fatality in those one and a half counts your stick placement is going to be very important to how well you're able to pull this off. So you got to keep that in mind. And then also you got to keep in mind once again is the velocity of the stick push and then the velocity of the stick hit. When you got those two things equal at velocity, this is the result you're going to get. And then finally with the trap catch itself, once again, do not worry about where you're catching the stick at. Just make sure you catch the stick. And if you're able to actually catch the stick at the butt of the stick, then you're able to finish it off by doing the knuckle roll coming back into regular position. And doing that ending move, of course, requires your knowledge of the knuckle roll. So make sure you watch that. So like I said, this stick trick is the most unpredictable stick trick out there because you don't know where the stick is going to bounce. But that's mainly because you don't understand all of the little mechanics and little things that are very important for the success of this stick trick. So as long as you follow all of these methods that I've explained in this video and you practice a lot, you're going to eliminate a lot of the unpredictability of this stick trick and you might get a bit more consistent with it every day as long as you practice. And then a quick tip, if you're doing this on a rubber based drum pad, then you're going to have a really hard time with doing the stick trick because for whatever reason, the stick grips the rubber before it bounces off and it goes into even crazier directions. So try to do this on an actual snare drum or a hard surface that doesn't have rubber on it if you're gonna try to do this stick trick. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you want full access to over 500 videos of stick tricks, rudiments, and exercises, sign up today at schoolofsuperdrumming.com. The link is in the description.